I'm Bobby Fye here running solo today because Sheets is gone for the first look. We're going to combine this first look as a first look slash five and five because we're going to go quickly. There's not a whole lot of games. So I'm going to tell you what I'm focusing on. Uh, reminder, all my bets of the day, which have been on fire nine and three yesterday, uh, basically been been that was like one of the wor worst days we've had in the last 10 days. So uh, check out the bets on uh, the bets of the day. And uh, check out my ownerships on SaberSim if you do have SaberSim through TrueDFS. Um, I'm sorry, my core plays over there. And then also I have my early lineup builds uh, to check out on the ownership. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate all that stuff. Uh, with that said, let's get into this smaller slate that I think has some places that we can try and take advantage of maybe some lower ownership in some spots and some unusual plays. So I'll just go game by game really quickly. <clears throat> Philadelphia, I'd like to play... Embiid and Harden, but I prefer Giannis, and so I'm probably not going to end up getting to much of them at the moment. If I played more lineups today, I definitely would be getting to a lot of them, especially Embiid, but I would, wouldn't mind mixing some Harden in there. I actually think this is a really good spot for Harden to have a really big night, and uh, both those guys make a lot of sense to me. Nobody else is my playing on Philly. Let's move on to the next one. Let's go to Detroit. Um, I, I think that you could make argument for some of these guys on FanDuel. I think Isaiah Stewart's an interesting large field tournament play. I like his prop bet of nine and a half points today. I think that's a good over bet. Um, Killian Hayes, I think, is probably the most relevant one in, in here for me. I don't think I need to play any of them. I think Kelly Olynyk will show up well on projections. As you can see, Kelly Olynyk doesn't play all that many minutes, hardly ever. He can be incredibly productive. We've just seen it. In, we've seen it in the last couple of times. This is the, a good kind of matchup for him. So I don't mind mixing him in. I just don't think it needs to be a high priority, but it is a guy who I don't mind getting to a little bit. On this side, uh, this is a game I really like. I keep, I've, I've done really well with my Milwaukee-Brooklyn betting over the last couple of years, so I'm going to keep rolling with it. Uh, I like Milwaukee. I kind of like the under in this game, but mostly I like Milwaukee. And uh, uh, they're two-point dogs. I love Giannis. This is playoff Giannis that we're getting. This is must win time, must do everything time. And if the game, you know, stays close, which you'd, you'd assume it would, um, I expect Giannis to be in the 65 plus range. And I think that there's room even to grow on that. So he is my favorite spend up of the day. I don't mind if you want to take a different route and play Holiday or Middleton, but the main guy I'll be playing is Brooke Lopez. I actually think the ownership and stuff, because he didn't have a, a big productive game against Embiid, there are worse things. 29 minutes though, 29 and 28 and two out of his last uh, three games. I think if he gets any minutes like that against his old Brooklyn team, by the way, um, who does now play a big, so you can you could argue that it's better for him to be out there. They're not going to do that small KD at the five thing where he gets run, played off the court. I think that uh, Lopez uh, feels safe and he feels like there's a lot of upside at 3,900. So he will be a staple for me and to give away something. I, he is a core play for me today uh, at first look until unless we hear about other value opening up. Uh, Brooklyn, if you want to run it back with KD or Kyrie, I think FanDuel is more the place you want to do it. But that's just what I've that's what I've got for right now. So I, I don't really think I need to touch any of the other spots in Brooklyn. I don't mind like if you're playing a bunch of lineups, mixing in Curry and Dragic certainly makes some sense. It's just not the way that I'm going with my builds today. Uh, so that's pretty much going to be it's pretty much going to be honest for me in this game. And I, I will probably will build one stack because this game is such a, you know the highest total on the night. If it does stay close, and it probably should. Um, getting some ex you know exposure to KD and uh, and Gar and uh, Giannis in a lineup is something that's viable, but I, I like other spots better. I like other ways of building better. That's just something that I, I'll probably throw into one like smaller build. Uh, Cleveland, Atlanta. I think this is another one you can play Trey and Garland together pretty easily on FanDuel. I kind of like that, although there's some other good point guards you have to give up on. Um, but I really do like I, I like it better over there. It's just the pricing makes it much easier, and that's why I'm sort of going that route. Um, the main play, though, is Karis Levert for DFS on both sites. Uh, we, we've seen him get the usage. He finally actually made some shots, and you see what happens when you can make some shots. He put up 46 fantasy points. Um, that was last night. Played 38 minutes. Uh, I think he's a better play on FanDuel at a cheaper price, but I think he's a really good play on DraftKings and hard to fade. Um, so I do have him as a core play as of right now as well. He's a, he's a very strong play. And if you're not going to play him, the, the long shot guy might be to keep an eye out for Kevin Love. Uh, after not, not playing him, not playing very well and not playing as many minutes as the other guys last night, maybe he gets some run here in Atlanta. This is a very important game, especially for Cleveland, but for both teams, they, they need to keep winning. And uh, I think you should see the, the best efforts out of them, but it's going to be tough on the back to back. And, and, you know, there's another game you can think about the under and uh, also think about Atlanta, like, you know, maybe, maybe covering here. Trey is a great play, but like, again, I don't think I prefer him to the other spend ups and they're too close in price. I think Capella is your next guy you go to. And then you have to see what happens with everybody else. Um, really hard to do early in the day. I will be live at 545 Eastern time to cover all that. But on Atlanta, you, you might want to mix in 
a little bit of the, the hot shooting herder. He was made eight out of 10 shots and, and yesterday and put up 31 fantasy points after putting it up, you know, four out of the last five. Now you've seen him be really, really good. So I don't mind getting the herder, but again, with if Gallinari is back, it changes things. You even have the possibility of John Collins playing, which I'm still skeptical of, but if that happens, things could happen. So just keep an eye on the back-to-back on this one, I guess is my overall point. The Clippers, we have to see what happens with Morris and Batum. I'm not sure it's going to do a whole bunch for me unless you had a different starting lineup of some sort. So I really don't know what to do with these guys. I think a long shot Paul George play is, is in order. I mean, hey, the guy comes back and puts up 57 fantasy points. Now, he's not going to make every shot like he was in that last game. He was on fire. He brought them back. It was incredible. Um, I still think he's a good long shot tournament play, but again, not, not, not a priority as spend up as the LA Utah game as the uh, Giannis play for me. And then also the Bulls, all DeRozan, Levine, and Vucevic are incredibly in play. I think DeRozan has been terrific. They, another team that's really trying to win. The Clippers don't really have much to play for, by the way, except for getting Paul George back acclimated. But uh, I, do, I do like DeRozan again. He's been playing really, really well, tons of usage. And you've seen him just take a bunch of shots lately. He's always going to get to the free throw line. Uh, feels like a pretty good play here. And I don't think he's going to be like crazy, crazy owned at the moment. It could change as things go later. But I do like all three of those guys in that order. Vucev- uh, DeRozan, Vucevic, Levine. On the, with the Lakers in Utah, I think that you want to mix in a ton of Lakers here. <laughs> and I understand they're 13-point dogs. I understand they're, can they keep it close on the road in Utah. Honestly, they could be like 20-point dogs here. Wouldn't surprise me. Maybe if Utah didn't blow a 25-point lead in their last game with the Clippers, they would be a 25-point dog, the Lakers, or a 20-point dog. But I think that there is an argument, and, and we've seen West, Westbrook have big games there in the past. I understand that everybody you know, hates Westbrook and how terrible he's been. I'm just going to show you guys, look, look he's actually been in extremely efficient. I mean, most of these games are with LeBron, but look at the shooting percentage. He's shooting, I believe, like, I think he has one of the better shooting numbers for over the last, I think it's, is it 14 games or 15 games, whatever I read, of uh, most guards in the, uh, in the league. He's like in the top five or something. I don't know. What, I don't remember what the exact stat was, but it was... He's been much better and much more efficient than people are realizing, not turning the ball over nearly as much with the exception of that Philly game. Uh, I do think that we're going to take a shot here on Westbrook, have some shots here on Westbrook. He is a guy I'm going to put in my core because I like that. I think he's going to be a little bit lower owned than he should be. And if they stay close, he's going to have to have something to do with it along with Malik Monk. I prefer Carmelo on FanDuel, even though that's weird because the scoring lends himself better over here. He's 4,100 on FanDuel, so a little bit of a price difference. And then I like uh, uh, Stanley Johnson is going to be incredibly popular. Usually I'd say fade him in this situation. We have less value on the slate, so I'm okay with it. But just be aware that that three fantasy point game does come more often than you might think. So Stanley Johnson on both sides is definitely a a strong play, but I I sort of like taking the chance on him on 4,500 on FanDuel instead of 3,800 on DraftKings because the 3,800 skills makes him such an obvious play. And I think he'll be higher owned. And I don't think there's a huge gap between like him having a bad game or a really good game. So I I do want to sprinkle these guys in, but the priorities are Westbrook, then Monk, then Stanley Johnson. And then your longer shot plays on DraftKings will be THT and Anthony. And I think Dwight Howard, I think this is a spot where if you have a Lambus Chalky, forget the last minutes in the last game, when they play against bigs, he does tend to play minutes. And we've seen him even against Embiid, you know, last week, he put up four, almost 40, 39 fantasy points. I think this is a spot against Gobert where they might leave him out there a little bit if they're having trouble on the boards. And if they do, we've seen him put up huge spot, huge games in those, these spots, even against tough matchups. So I like the idea of playing a long shot Dwight Howard. So I'm going to be focusing most of my attention on this last game and hoping it stays close. Uh, Donovan Mitchell is a core play. Really tough to avoid him. It's too good of a matchup. Uh, but if you're not playing Mitchell, uh, you can play Conley. You can do it over on Fandle. More, more people will do it over there because Conley's 5,400, Mitchell 81. But I like them on both sites. And uh, you get Gobert, uh, Bogdanovich coming back, I mean. and uh, But I still love Gobert here. I just think that you really want exposure to this game. So that's sort of how I'm building. And you'll see it some in my – I'm going to share now my FanDuel early builds just for a quick glance because, again, I don't want to get into trouble. But I do want to be as honest with you guys as I can. And there's a really quick glance at my early FanDuel builds. And uh, yeah, I, I'm basically, you can screenshot that or, what, if you, or if you're a member of the site, you can just go up there. It's on the site about my early builds. But I do like this Laker-Utah game quite a bit as the focus. So again, to reiterate, focus is uh, Brolo, Giannis, Levert, uh, Levert or Love, but Levert is the main play. Love is sort of the pivot. Uh, DeMar- DeRozan, Levine, or Vooch, and then it's all the last game for me. Westbrook, Monk, um, and then some combination of one of THT, Howard, Stanley Johnson, Mello, and then Gobert, Mitchell, Conley being my favorites with a little Royce O'Neal on the other side as well because a good game environment for him. I don't even mind at 5K if you want to throw in Bogdanovich on Fanduel because he can he can knock down like five or six threes against these Lakers and uh, 
you know, he's going to add on to some other stats just naturally just by being on the court in this kind of environment. So I really think that's what you're trying to do as an initial build. Again, I'll be live at 545 Eastern time. Thanks so much to all of you guys who've been supportive of the channel. Thanks so much to, to you guys who have been supportive of the show. Um, I'm sorry, of the uh, site. We're doing great. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're still in, incorporating everything with Saberson, but it's, it's going really, really well. We've had a few hiccups that have mostly been on the hosting side. We think everything's figured out. So should all be good. Anyway, guys, we appreciate all the business and we appreciate all the love. Jump in the Discord and uh, be active. We love any activity in there. And uh, good luck to everybody today.